they were ordinary people. They were killed because who they are. Not for anything that's said, done, but because they were Jews, because they were gypsies, because they were homosexuals. And that's what we have to have. We've got to have respect for other people. I was asked by a group of women, how come that you are even here? You were not supposed to be here. You were all supposed to be gone. The Nazis murdered close to 7 million Jews, not 6 million, close to 7. 20 million Russians. 3 million Russian POWs they murdered. Uh, 1,900 priests in Europe were murdered. Uh, Catholics were murdered too. Quite a few Catholics, a few million. Uh, they can't deny it. There are people who went to Auschwitz and Buchenwald and all the other concentration camps. There are those who were hidden children. There are those who were in the kinder transport. So we've got we've got a whole variety of people. If you haven't lived through it, even reading about it doesn't get across what really happened. I try to stress to the children that it's not only about the six million Jews. It is about respect. It is about the world. It is about learning and trying to be a better person. It's important. It's respect for others. Respect. It's the answer. It's common decency. It's respect. Respect. It's the answer. On April the 12th, 1945, when we went into Nordhausen, it was something that we were never prepared for. Very often, especially if I'm talking to grown-ups, I have nightmare before, very bad night before and after. Even during the war, before we went over, we didn't hear about concentration camps. In Auschwitz, the Nazis murdered between 12,000 and 20,000 a day. Between 12,000 and 20,000 people every day. We to go through that beautiful little town <clears throat> and then see the railroad tracks, the barbed wire, and those emaciated skeletons hanging on there. I joined a organization called the DIN, means judgment. It's a Hebrew word for judgment. A little over a year ago, I was at Seagate Elementary School. Usually the youngsters have questions. There were 50 boys and girls and 300 Jewish Soviet high-ranking officers helped us. They joined us and we were hunting for high-ranking Nazis. And a 10-year-old girl asked me if I remember what were the last words what my parents told me when Gestapo picked them up because they were taken one year before my brother, me and the whole family went to camp. We just couldn't believe it. Some guys wept, others, many of them vomited. And we were told by the medics not to give them food because we'd kill them. I could, I, st I had to sit down and cry and I needed, because it, nobody ever asked me and in that moment I see. And we were successful with some men of whom we couldn't find. We were looking for Della Globotsk, we couldn't find him. We were looking for Mr. Klimatis from Lithuania, we couldn't find him. He was the head of the Nazis in Lithuania. They murdered all the Jews in Lithuania. They didn't wait for the Nazis to come in. It's, 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 it's emotional. And you know, <clears throat> at this time of my life, 
there are other things that I can get emotional about, but it's the past. I just could not believe that we had, humanity had sunk to that level of evil. It was so horrendous. Half of the people were dead when they came to the extermination camp. They dragged that boxcar with 120 people standing room only for a few days and a few nights. They closed the doors, they closed the win little windows, there was no air, no sanitary facilities. Can you imagine? Here it was, demeaning, ostracizing, you name it. Do the most you can to make these people feel like they're worms of the earth. Respecting others, it's everything. It's important, it's respect for others. It's common decency, it's respect. Respect, it's the answer. And we were not told to do this, but we did it. And I understand that every other American unit that liberated a concentration camp brought the townspeople in from this beautiful little town and had them dig the pits and then carry the bodies and bury them. The Holocaust is not a one-time thing. History shows that, and unfortunately, every day here in our world, same thing. Look at history, it will repeat itself if you don't learn from it. And that's what the Holocaust is, a teaching tool to learn from what not to do. And the thing that bothered me more than anything else that they said, most of them said, we didn't know what was going on. I mean, none of us knew, which they could have smelled it miles around. Some of the kids say, can I touch you? Can I touch you? Because mm, we don't believe it. You know, we read it. It's a history like everything else, but you are really, you were there. It's true, so they go and touch and hug and, that, that is really very, very nice. I want people to know what happened. I tell them the truth. No propaganda. But even historians will argue about what really happened. Numbers is the worst that can happen to people. Because if you give people numbers, you take away their identity. They are not a person anymore. They are just a number. It, and it'll be sterilized. Each day one or two people who do realize who we are and why is it important. We are going to schools and teaching children about the inequality, the hatred that permeate societies and we want to be aware of it and do everything we can possibly stop it. If we don't care about each other or if we don't help or we are just the opposite like helping the fire to go instead of trying to stop it. The older I get the more difficult it gets to get the message over because we are the last generation and once we are gone, nobody is there to, who has been a witness to what happened. I am the witness. It happened to me and to my family and I can only speak for what it is. If you are not willing to accept it as a true, I cannot change. Do you have hope for the future, Amy? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, I have. Hope, I never lost my hope. You can't imagine how life was in Auschwitz, working under the machine gun. You have always two choices. Either hang yourself on the first tree or go on. And then you go on, you have to go on with everything. 
hatred starts very innocently often with uh, telling ethnic jokes. We impress that on the students. I always tell the children, you cannot change the world, but you can do one little thing, even if it's on the playground, that you help somebody who's been bullied. It's common decency. It's respect. It's important. It's respect for others. It's important. It's respect for others. Respecting others is everything. Respect is the answer. That we exist and people should come. And yes, we know it's not a pleasant, entertaining few hours, but it's necessary to know what happened. One student uh, wrote me a note. It was a boy who said he'd been searching all his life for a hero. And he says, I found it. It's you. Even in our small museum, I hope we can influence enough people, if it's just a small minority, to listen and learn. We've accomplished something. I believe in people. People are good. The country is the best because the people are the best here. Uh, and when the pouring out of, of gratitude and enthusiasm when Jack Norton's boxcar came here. I'll never forget that day. That was all the people everywhere. And it was a great tribute, not only to our museum, and Jack was one of the most wonderful guys in the world, but it was this community rose up and support, and it meant something. And, and that's the thing we've got to do. We want this to mean something, mean something to school children, people, make them realize what we can do, what we must do, to stop this bigotry and hatred in the world. If you respect people, you can't do bad things. Respect is the cornerstone of life.